Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup, bringing you all the best bits from the weekend's Cinch Championship, League One and League Two action. Coming up... Tony Watt's late goal in the Highlands sees the Terrors return to the top of the table. Late drama at Meadow Bank as Falkirk score an added time to avoid defeat against Edinburgh City. And Stenhouse Muir move 14 points clear at the top of Cinch League 2 with a big win over Spartans. Friday evening saw Dundee United travel to the Highlands to take on Cali Thistle. The hosts looking bright early on, with Billy Mackay making his presence felt. Mackay continued to get into good positions throughout the first half. The striker again though, unable to find the net. Into the second period and United would begin to look more threatening. Tony Watt getting on the end of a Liam Grimshaw cross, but heading over. On loan Dundee midfielder Max Anderson has been impressive for the Highland side recently. He forced a smart save from Jack Walton in the United net, with Charlie Gilmore unable to hit the target on the follow-up. Both sides had chances to take the lead in the second half. Archie Mikkelsen the next to go close for the away side. In a tight and cagey affair, it seemed as though one goal may be enough to settle it. A goal provided by United striker Watt in the 86th minute. Glenn Middleton with excellent work to lay one on a plate for the inform forward. Cali though hadn't given up hope of salvaging at least a point. Cameron Harper finding Killian Sheridan in the box late on, but the striker unable to finish. Three points on the road for Jim Goodwin's men. Wraith aimed to return to winning ways after last weekend's defeat to Airdrie. They came flying out the traps on Saturday, with Jack Hamilton putting Rovers a goal up just three minutes in. The striker netting his eighth in all competitions this season. The away side looked to hit back with a quick-fire reply. Ruri Payton's volleyed effort being well saved by Andy McNeil. Rovers went close to doubling their lead through Aidan Connolly. His excellent free kick stopped by a flying save from Callum Ferry. Queens continued to push for a leveller throughout the first half. Cameron Bruce the next to test McNeil. And Bruce would find himself at the focal point of another Queen's attack on 42 minutes. The young midfielder with a brilliant first touch and curling finish to level things up. Bruce's first professional goal, one which he won't be forgetting in a hurry. Into the second half and Rovers pressed to retake the lead. Hamilton forcing another top stop from Ferry. And the striker would get another big chance soon after, this time nodding the ball over the top. Missed chances would come back to bite Rovers in the 56th minute, when new Queen signing Sean Welsh headed his side in front. The former Cali Thistle midfielder with his first goal since March. Rovers continued to create chances late into the game. Hamilton with another header, this one easily caught by Ferry. And the hosts would go close again right at the death. Jamie Gullen seeing a free kick, cannon back off the crossbar. The away side scoring back-to-back -back wins for the first time since August. Thistle picked up a memorable victory on their last visit to Capilo. Aidan Fitzpatrick went close to scoring a spectacular opener on Saturday after an excellent run. Morton have been impressive in attack in recent weeks. Robbie Crawford denied a brilliant goal by a top save from Jamie Snedden. The game's opening goal would come from a Morton corner on 31 minutes. Many bodies in the box, with Thistle defender Jack McMillan getting the decisive touch. Doogie Emery's side opening the scoring for the third game running. 
Thistlekeeper Snedden was a busy man in the first half. He did well to keep Crawford at bay again here. Morton were firmly on top in the first period. Another scramble in the box here, but the hosts unable to find the net this time round. Into the second half, and Morton continued to push for a second goal. Robbie Muirhead blazing this one over the top of Snedden's net. Morton's litany of missed chances would come back to haunt the hosts. The away side drawing themselves level in the 75th minute through young striker Rico Diak. The 18-year-old with his second league goal of the campaign. Having drawn themselves level, Thistle hunted down a winner. Substitute Tommy Adloy seeing a short crack of the near post. And Thistle thought they should have had a penalty late in the game when Ben Stanway went down in the box, but saw appeals waved away by referee Craig Napier. 1-1 the final score at Capilo. Our broth welcomed the honest men to Gayfield on Saturday. The away side going close to an early goal through Akeem Rose. Our broth's first opportunity would come for Leighton McIntosh, whose header could only rattle the woodwork. Into the second half and both sides fought to find a breakthrough. Our broth striker Jay Bird sending this one over the top. Air striker Rose certainly looked lively in this one. He rounded Ali Adams to create a big chance for himself, but could only find the side netting. And Rose would have another chance soon after. Another good run from the striker, but Adams with an important save. Ayr certainly looked the more likely team to score in the second half. Anton Dowd's firing this one wide of the mark. Adams in the Arbroath net had to be on his toes to keep things level, this time keeping out a goal-bound effort from Francis Amarty. Logan Chalmers has produced some magical moments for Ayr this season. The winger denied a late goal at Gayfield by the post. It ended goalless in Angus. Here's a look at the latest standings in the Cinch Championship. Dundee United returned to top spot thanks to victory in the Highlands, with Wraith being defeated on home turf. Queen's Park are up to 8th place thanks to their victory at Starks Park, while Ayr and Arbroath occupy the bottom two places after their goalless draw at Gayfield. But now a chance for Brad Spencer to deliver a corner. Plenty in the box for Falkirk, plenty of height for Spencer to aim at. Hurls one in. It's over everyone and it's Headed off the line. Oliver carrying forward. Flicked on by Spencer. Lovely layoff by Ethan Ross. Here's Gary Oliver. And it's a good save from Rudy Adams to... Frankie Dean clips this one in. It's an awkward one. It's off the bar. And it's an opening goal for Edinburgh City. It's Callum Flatman in the six-yard box. Spencer hangs this one in. Up goes Lang. Free kick to come now, Dean standing over it, calls this one deep. Header won by Lang, drops from Marshall who nods it back, and it's in by Alufi! Incredible! City lead by two goals to nil, and it's the new signing, Alufi! Nesbitt out to Miller, rides a challenge. Miller driving down the left-hand side, Shanley in the box, as is Ross, and it's... Henderson wins the duel with Faye. Spencer sends it in behind. Shanley in pursuit. Here is Ryan Shanley, the former Inver City man. Cuts it back for Nesbitt. Just a little bit of static at times off the throw and not enough runners on the move. Yates knocks it into the box. Flicked on by Shanley. Here's Calvin Miller turning. And Miller pulls the goal back for Falkirk. Falkirk desperately needed a goal and they've found one through Calvin Miller. Lang again. Here's Donaldson. Picks his head up and opts to switch the play. Here's Calvin Miller taking it in his stride. Miller attacking the goal and tries to take it out wide and quick free kick taken now. McCann hangs it in. Drops for 
Tom Lang. It's Lang! And it's a massive save. Twisting and turning. Ross to curl one. Off the crossbar. Is there to be a way through here for Falkirk? As they search for an equaliser, Spencer hangs it in. Up goes Henderson. It drops. It's off the bar again. And Donaldson sends it over. Nesbitt trying to work an angle. McCann hangs one deep. Knocked across by Lang. There's Spencer. And again. Donaldson keeps it in play. Donaldson steps inside. And outside again. It's good from Donaldson. Donaldson hauled down. Falkirk penalty. This is a huge moment in this match, of course, but potentially in the context of the season as well. Falkirk, 25 unbeaten. It's Calvin Miller! Yeah! And it's in the back of the net! The Beards equalise right at the death! Calvin Miller with a massive goal! A huge goal here! It was second versus third at New Douglas Park as Aki's welcomed Cove Rangers. The hosts with a lightning quick start as Kevin O'Hara opened the scoring on seven minutes. The striker with a goal in each of his last three appearances. Cove pushed for a quick response through Mark Gallagher, but Jamie Smith pulled off a top stop to deny the midfielder. Aki's went close to doubling their lead shortly after through Lewis Smith, who was unable to finish after Nick Suman closed the angle. The hosts were well on top in the first half, but couldn't double their lead due to some excellent last-ditch defending from Cove. The second half continued in a similar vein. Ewan Henderson with a great run for Aki's, but unable to find the net. Cove defender Michael Doyle was shown a yellow card on 50 minutes for this foul on Lewis Smith. But just five minutes later, Aki's would find themselves down to 10 men. Ben Williamson shown a straight red card on his debut for the club. Cove fought to take advantage of the extra man soon after. Scott Williamson though denied by another top save from goalkeeper Smith. And despite being a man light, Aki's would find that all important second goal in the 71st minute. Jamie Borjonis pouncing in the area to make it 2-0. The midfielder on target for the first time since late October. But the playing field would be levelled on 75 minutes. Cove defender Doyle shown a second yellow and subsequent red for a handball. The away side kept on battling late into the game but couldn't find the net. Three crucial home points for John Rankin's Ackies. Montrose welcomed the Beanos to Angus with hopes of picking up their first win since mid-December. Paul Watson with an early strike which kept Blair Curry on his toes. The home side had much of the early chances on Saturday. Ali Shrive the next player to test Curry's resolve. The Beanos went close to a spectacular opening goal at Lynx Park. Defender Paul McLean rattling the crossbar with a stunning volley with no one able to force the ball home on the rebound. Montrose were back on top though soon enough, Curry again having to be sharp to deny a goal-bound effort from Watson. Into the second half and Sterling had a huge opportunity to open the scoring after a parry from Cammy Gill. Dale Hilson though was unable to capitalise. The Beatles began to create more opportunities after the break, Kieran Moore seeing a strike narrowly whistle past the post and the pressure would eventually tell in the 69th minute. New signing Callum Crane pouncing on a slack first touch before driving towards goal and opening the scoring. The perfect way to mark your first appearance for the club. But Crane would find himself at the centre of attention for the wrong reasons just 10 minutes later, shown a straight red card for this foul on Harry Craig. 
Montrose pushed hard for a late leveller with Sterling a man light. Blair Lyons unable to knock this one home at the back post. A first win of 2024 for Darren Young's Beano's. Alloa travelled to Dumfries on a run of six without defeat in all competitions. The Wasps applying early pressure but unable to make it count here. But Alloa's attacking endeavour would reap rewards soon enough. Taylor Stephen finding Bobby Wales on 25 minutes, who fired his side in front. Wales continuing his scoring hot streak with another goal here. Queens would begin to purr in attack soon after. Craig McGuffey forcing an excellent save from PJ Morrison to keep it at 1-0. But the hosts would pull themselves level before the break. 43 minutes on the clock when Kieran McKechnie found Lee Connolly, who made it 1 1. The pacey attacker coming back to haunt his former club. And Queen's could have went into the break a goal up. Effie Ambrose going mightily close with this header. Queen's continued to apply pressure heading into the second half. Connolly again involved but unable to force a way to goal. Connolly was certainly the host's main goal threat on Saturday. Wasps keeper Morrison doing well to keep this header out. Chances kept falling for Queens and for Connolly, but the striker just couldn't double his tally. After a half largely dominated by the hosts, Alloa had a chance to win it late on. Wales though missing the mark this time round. A point apiece at Palmerston. Right there, mate. Thanks to Donald. Hey, Donald, how's it going? Ryan. Akoski. Gets across towards the back post. Just flip and fall. Nice pass down the lunge back to Tidja. Tidja with the ball, he goes down, it looks like he's tripped and he was. It's a penalty. Looking for the score. Shoot and nets it in the bottom left hand corner. Kelty Hearts 1 and an athletic 0. Here's a look at the latest standings in Cinch League 1. Aki's home win over Cove Rangers sees them gain ground at the top, with Falkirk dropping points at Meadow Bank. Alloa's away point in Dumfries moves them level on points with 4th placed Montrose, while Sterling's win at Montrose puts 9 points between themselves and 9th placed Annan Athletic. Stenhouse Muir travel to the capital aiming for their 11th straight win. Spartans though with the game's first chance, which Jamie Dishington flashed just wide. But it wasn't too long before the Warriors were in front. Matty Yates winning the ball on 27 minutes and beating Blair Carswell from outside the box. The attacker with his sixth goal of the season. And Yates went close to grabbing a second before half time. Carswell with a good save this time round. Spartans pushed hard to level things up after the break. A good run from Blair Henderson here, 
but the finish just wide of the target. Mikey Anderson has been one of the division's standout midfielders this season. He waved his way into the Spartans' box, but couldn't score from a tight angle. Ewan O'Reilly has been another star performer for the Warriors. He went close to making it 2-0 here. Spartans kept on battling to draw themselves back on level terms. Bradley White going close with an audacious curling strike. But as has so often been the case this season, this match belonged to the Warriors. 81 minutes on the clock when Matty Aitken broke into the Spartans' box and bagged his 13th of the season to wrap up the points. 11 straight wins for Gary Naismith's side, an incredible feat and a new club record. As this ball comes out to Dolan, he tries to square it to... Oh, well done. Out, it reaches Chris Johnston. Dolan stays on side. Out to Dolan, yep, he's still on side. Tries to the get box. back in, get a shot away. And he scores! Yep. Goal to Chris Johnston, six minutes in. Nice bit of football. Dolan squares it into the middle. Goes off and he's tries to make well. amends and did well there. He's on side yep, here. Flag stays down. He Cuts deliver inside. again. He's got a man waiting. Second attempt. <laughs> Ooh. Going hmm. mad at had it been allowed to had he been allowed to go through and cause any damage. See this one oh, out. Oh, that, he, didn't, so. he didn't see it out, and we've got a problem here. Brave goalkeeping to deny Amy Ritchie. So we're struggling to get rid of this one here. Oh, Chris Johnson goes off on in chase. Now that could be an offside flag think, here for no, all. No, it's staying down. It's staying down. I think he was offside. And he's well, right at home! The birthday boy! 46th minute, or survives a possible offside flag. Amy's Ritchie into the box. Keeper and comes that's for a it. good free kick. And the keeper did well twice there. Ross gets a touch, McQueen gets a touch. It's good experience oh, play just to Roberts, shield the ball that, there. That, that'll be a yellow card for McCarthy who kind of raised his arms at, at Robertson after a, a tussle there. It, it just looked like one of their players kicked the ball out but it, it clearly must have deflected off somebody on the way out. Strachan keeps running, keeps running, sends it in. Oh. And I'll tell you what, he was not far away with that one. No. McCarthy's there, but, and Richie pokes well it done. towards him, but <laughs> that's a, a free kick. I would suggest it's a yellow as well, yeah. yeah. McCarthy booked. And a red. And a red, yeah, it's his second booking. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure he's offside, to be honest. I'm not sure the linesman saw what he was doing anyway. Well, if he can pick out a man here with the ball. Yeah. Oof. And, um, well, corner straight up. It's been our first, it feels like our first corner in quite some time. It certainly does. The Loons welcomed Elgin to Station Park on a chilly afternoon. The away side's first chance falling to Rob Jones, whose header went over the top. Forford defender Andy Munro is always a threat from set pieces. He went close to opening the scoring here. But it would be the away side who would take the lead in the 36th minute. A short corner routine, with the ball eventually breaking for Ross Draper, who slammed it home. The experienced midfielder with just his second goal for the black and whites. Forfer came out with a point to prove in the second half. Seb Ross going close to making it 1-1 with this header. And the hosts would go close yet again shortly after, Matty Allen this time, whose header bounced just past the far post. Elgin midfielder Brian Cameron found his name in Alistair Greaves' book on the hour mark for this challenge on Finn Robson. New signing Tyler Makita looked sharp for the Loons. He almost bagged the debut goal, but was denied by the crossbar but it would be another debutant who would draw the Loons level. Makita picking out Russell McLean on 72 minutes, who finished from close range. McLean getting off to a flyer in his new surroundings. It was one-way traffic in the second half. McLean going close to a second goal, but missing the mark here. But the striker would get another big chance in added time. 
when referee Grieve awarded the hosts a late spot kick. Elgin's Cameron shown a second yellow and a red for his challenge. Forward McLean stepped up and slotted the ball beyond Tom McHale to clinch the points right at the death. The perfect debut for Forfer's new talisman. Some good work here from Hilton. Still Hilton, deflection. There's plenty to aim at in there. Neil Martin Yuk Rose's top scorer in the league this season. And Kerr Young looked to be the obvious options. Martin Yuk's up there! And Neil Martin Yuk heads Bonner Rose in front. There it comes, there's two over there. Paddy Martin has to punch it away. Join straight away only as far as Malcolm lining up the drive. Curry looking for Kerr Young. Kerr Young on for Magaki. What a save by Jay Hogart. Shifts on to his left, gets a cross in. That one's away by Shields. Don has a go. And Hogart has to push that one by for another corner. They know the importance of things being level heading into the break. As Orsi flicks it through for Byrne. Cuts it back, Shields effort is blocked, Orsi for Hilton, that's a brilliant save from Paddy Martin. Shields as well to find Wallace, making up some good ground there. Go as far as Newbury for Malcolm, it's a brilliant pass name for Pignatello, chops onto his right. Off the head of Johnny Stewart, still not clear, Pignatello forces it home and Dumbarton draw level early on in the second half. Hilton's cross, down for Byrne and it just trickles towards Paddy Martin. Newbury to get rid of it, here's Ruth, finds Orsi. Forces Paddy Martin into a flying save at his front post. Well, Ross couldn't quite get that under control, but he's swift. Do still have it. Wade. Oh, it's oh. off the bar. Is it going to go in on the rebound? Yes! yes! Crash heads home. It's a, perhaps a task fortuitous. Where the effort just came off the bar there. It dropped favourably to him. And it's an early lead for his five. Three kicks don't actually try and take the goalkeeper on. Oh, effort to the deflection there. Rennie. Oh, damn Trout. Run back by Trout. Now Fash. Could be a breakaway here for his five. Fash is powering forward. He gets it to Healy. Cuts it back. Oh! It's just flashed wide. Scooped into the area. Could be a chance on the volley. Decent effort. East Swift can't get rid of this. Bit of a smash and grab, but Clyde have equalised. Yeah. It's just disappointing the way that Rennie's picking the ball up. Rennie's going for it. Over the wall, it's off the post. Rennie cutting back inside. Comes in from Rennie. Oh, the save at the front post. Scooped over. Shepard touching the chest. Fash. He's going to go for it. Ah, just couldn't quite direct it on target. One but, oh, Shavoni. Well, it looked like he had it back and then he lost it. And this could be a chance. Oh, but it's well off target. Well, East Fife shot themselves in the foot there. But comfortably off target in the end. Now to check in on how things stand in Cinch League 2. Stenhouse Muir are 14 points clear at the top after securing their 11th straight league victory. 
Stranraer's win over second place Peterhead has the Blues up in sixth place, while Forfar move above Elgin City after a crucial victory at Station Park.